G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's finally happened. The market cap has cracked that $400 billion mark. I had a feeling it was gonna come pretty soon uh, and I did think Bitcoin was gonna have to break that $12,000 mark to do it. Now it has been really, really close. This was up around $11,900 mark uh, and it keeps fluctuating between the high 11 eights uh, and the low 11 nines at the moment. So, you know, it, it, the day's not over just yet. I mean, in Australia, it's getting pretty close, but uh, in America and things like that, you know, they've still got a while to go. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, if we're gonna finally break that $12,000 mark and hold above it, because that's the key. It's all good that we break out above, but if we don't hold that, then yeah then it wasn't really, you know, the breakout that we were hoping for. But what's interesting also is Ethereum. You know, we were under $400 only not that long ago. Not that long ago at all. And now we're pushing up on that $470 mark. Very, very close. And we've actually pulled back a little bit. I think we were at $470 not that long ago. Uh, and so we're just under it at the moment. You know, $2 under 470 so again, that's that's a massive move from Ethereum. But what really worries me is we go over here. ETH gas prices are now 463 guay, or guay, I'm not sure how you say it. I think it's guay. That is unbelievable. That really does count out anyone who is not dealing in thousands of dollars from being able to use ETH. This is a massive problem, and I've spoke about this a number of times. You know, scaling solutions won't come quick enough for ETH. Uh, ETH is now going to turn into something that only the rich uh, will really be able to use. And don't get me wrong, Bitcoin's not going to be far behind. Once Bitcoin starts to push up over that $20,000 mark, it is going to be clogged up and it's going to cost you $50 to send a Bitcoin transaction. And they're, they're the two key f things that are really going to hold back mass adoption for both of these. So, you know, they won't be able to scale quick enough because... Yes, it's going to be great that they're going to have you know all this institutional adoption, which is slowly but surely happening. But there will be no retail adoption with uh, you know high transaction fees, and we can see here the BT dominance has also got down. Now let's quickly go over here and have a look at some of the movers. So sushi, I don't know a whole lot about sushi, but it's another yield farming kind of project like Yam. This is version two. Uh, and look at the moves that they've made. I mean, Sushi's up 200% in 24 hours and 50% just in the last hour. And Yam version two, you know, 230% in seven days and now 91% uh, in the last 24 hours. Look, I don't know a whole lot about these kind of yield farming programs, but I know anything that's, you know, named after a food and it's a meme, Yam, Sushi and all the rest of it, I wouldn't touch. This is... It's not sustainable, all this yield farming. I just, you know, I'm not a massive technical person, but I have enough common sense to know that they're all just leveraging off each other. That's If one falls down, eventually they're all going to start to crumble. So, you know, my personal opinion, not financial advice, is stay away from these. They're going to crumble. They're going to go to nothing. Yield farming, it's... Yeah, it's not sustainable. Uh, you know, it's been, you know, compared to Ponzi schemes and all the rest of it. And yeah, my gut feeling says that people are going to get really burnt uh, in these yield farming things. So I'm not touching them. And that will really affect the DeFi uh, stuff when they do finally crash. And I believe they will. I don't think the good DeFi projects will go to nothing, but I think they'll take a big hit. So uh, I am definitely concerned. And again, you look at all the players that are moving. You know, Ample Fourth, DeFi Money, Compound, yeah, yeah, big DeFi players, you know, Wi Fi, this is Wi Fi 2, so yeah. But just, yeah, be careful. I don't know how else to say it. Be very, very careful. I, I think uh, this yield farming stuff is going to lead to disaster for a lot of people. But impressive that we got over that $400 billion mark. That's awesome. Now let's go have a look at uh, the Ethereum uh, US chart. So there you go. It is above $470. So it's now $471. So we can see here, this is the resistance line that we were really trying to break. So we can go across here. We kind of got above it, fell down, and now we've really broken through it. And we've pushed through it hard. And you can see there's a bit of volume down here, so that's pretty good. But if we zoom out a little bit, really, 
there's not much uh, sort of resistance. There is, you know, some sort of, you know, roughly around about here. So 523, there's a little bit. And then, you know, a, a tiny bit here at 590. And then again, a tiny bit here at about that kind of $830 range. But really, the next kind of key resistance level that's got a bit of, you know, form is here around the $880, $890 mark. And then once we push through that, We've got a tiny little bit here, and really it's only once we kind of tipped off here. So what's this, $980? And then again, we've got a little bit kind of in and around here, let's say roughly uh, $1160, and then it's straight to new all-time highs. So that, that's what we're looking for, $1,400. You know, if momentum keeps going for ETH the way it has been, uh, I can see us getting up to this kind of $800 mark uh, in not too much time. I'm not saying it's going to happen today or tomorrow. It might take, you know, a week or two or even a couple of weeks, uh, but I don't think it's going to take us too long to get to here at all. Now, again, this is all moving pretty fast. This is a pretty good move, uh, and, and that's, you know, not too bad a retracement. Haven't really had too much retracement here other than this little bit, but that was a fake out. It pumped up really hard and then sold off uh, harder than it pumped up. But since this, you know, we had a fairly big drop here, but then we quickly regained all this. So all I'm saying is buyer beware. We definitely could have a pullback at some stage and it might be significant. But, you know, hopefully this kind of 400 uh, and, you know, well, there it is. It's about $430 level there, you know, give or take a few dollars. Hopefully this is going to become uh, our new support uh, and it doesn't be just resistance. Because again, this could be a fake out. Again, we've had these really big pumps here, and then, so we'll come over here. You know, big massive pump here, and then look, big sell off. It was mostly wick, there wasn't too much candle body there, but still, we've had one, two, three, four, five pretty good days for Ethereum. Uh, it is possible we have a sell off, but really, I'd be hoping that if we have a sell off, it comes and then starts to use this as support. So very, very interesting. And let's see how long it takes us to get up to this roughly $800 level. And then really from there, $1,400 isn't too much of uh, a move from there. And then we are setting, you know, new all time highs. I don't see this happening, you know, this month. I don't think it'll happen in September. I think we might sort of see new all time highs around the end of the year. So let's say maybe sort of November, December, but look, this is crypto, it could happen very, very fast. And there is lots of you know, people moving into uh, cryptocurrencies at the moment, particularly, particularly <laughs> excuse me, particularly big businesses. They are starting to kind of get in. You know, DeFi is really growing and I think it's only gonna get bigger. The yield farming uh, is, is a concern. As I said before, I don't think that's sustainable. When that folds, and I believe it will, I think DeFi is going to take a hit and there's going to be some uh, fairly large pullbacks and some, you know, will just never recover. But the good ones will still be around. And, you know, my personal opinion is good ones are things like uh, Aave. I think Aave is going to be around for a long time. Ren Protocol, I think they're going to be around for a long time. Uh, Synthetics Network, uh, I think they're going to be a, a lot around for a long time. You know, they're you know, the thing in derivatives market at the moment. And I think that is going to be an absolute behemoth. But, you know, that's, you know, got sucked into the whole yield farming thing as well. So I think, you know, when yield farming finally tumbles, and eventually it will, they will be hit pretty hard. Uh, and depending on when you got in, you know, you could be up for some fairly large uh, losses of, you uh, yeah, money if you've got into it late. If you've got into it early, you know, let's say you got into synthetics or something or Aave, you know, something back here, I don't think they're going to come back down to these levels. And again, this is an Ethereum chart. I'm just saying, I don't think they'll drop down that, that low. But let's say they're about here when the yield farming things fall over. I wouldn't be surprised if you, you know, saw a, a full 50% correction uh, from, you know, our all-time lows of this year. But that's, you know, just some personal opinion, not financial advice. Let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart. Because as we can see here, sorry, scale out, still just trading in that sort of mark there. Now, we haven't been able to break out of that, uh, and we are still in this pattern. But as I said the other day, this look pattern is quite similar to, to this pattern. Not exactly the same, but again, this was that fake out. 
and that's that fake out over there and then it kind of sold off and started forming some uh, lower lows for a little while and again so this is that pump out there is this maybe the pump that we're going to have now and then we come back down in here and retest this before we move up we'll just have to wait and see you know it, it, it's hard to say the volume uh, is a little bit low at the moment but you know that doesn't mean that uh, you know there's not some momentum uh, about to push up the volume here is a little bit kind of higher than it was back here uh, but it's not as high as it was in places over here. So, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Interesting uh, times at the moment, though. Uh, there's, there's been a good move in the market. And again, we'll go back here. We'll just have a quick refresh. 400 billion. Have we stayed above it? We have. We're still above uh, 400 billion. So can we hold that? And we can see, yep, $469 for an Ethereum US uh, and again, over there, it says it's 470. So can it hold? And will it push through to 500 and continue further on? Last but not least, I just wanted to come over here. So for all my Australian uh, viewers, rightio, the big banks, you know, for a long time, they were telling us that, you know, cryptocurrencies and all the rest of it, they were no good and to stay away from them. And now they are adopting blockchain technology. Now, don't get me wrong. They haven't jumped right on the back of cryptocurrencies per se. But obviously, uh, blockchain technology is something big and that they are looking into. So basically what's happened uh, is uh, the ANZ, so Australian New Zealand Banking Group, uh, the Commonwealth Bank uh, and a Westpac uh, Bank have all teamed up with IBM and they have digitized bank guarantees using blockchain, blockchain technology. So they're three of the four big banks that we have in Australia. We have another one called the National Bank and they were on board until uh, the pandemic hit and that's when they kind of pulled out. But I have no doubt that they'll probably get back on board and all four of uh, Australia's big national banks will be uh, working with IBM. And again, IBM, they're massive and they've got a, a ton of... I can't remember exactly, but I think someone said they have over 200 blockchain patents currently uh, being put forth. So IBM, they are making a massive move into uh, blockchain technology, but a lot of big businesses are. Businesses are, sorry. And that's how you can tell what is coming. Blockchain is going to be massive. And blockchain... Well, it's not just cryptocurrencies. That is the main thing. You watch stable coins are going to come out from all of these uh, companies in the not too dis distant future, uh, and they're going to be using blockchain technology. And then they will again move. I'm sure they're going to move into things like Ethereum and Bitcoin. And you know, again, they'll follow suit with the banks over in the United States that are now taking custody of cryptocurrencies. The big four in Australia will do exactly the same. They're not going to want to fall behind and getting uh, on board with IBM and digitizing bank guarantees. Uh, that's just the start of it. Uh, interesting times. I'm not going to take up too much more of your time. Uh, it's a bit late here in Australia uh, and I need to get to bed. <laughs> but anyway, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train and I'll see you next time.